Greetings, I'm the dentist. Welcome back to Dent Agenda. This is Chapter 3, Pediatric Dentistry. In this tutorial, we will discuss primary molar pulp therapy and its techniques. These are the points we are going through in this tutorial. Where the caries process has jeopardized pulpal sensibility, there are two alternatives, either extraction or pulp therapy. Pulp therapy for cariously exposed primary molars aims to conserve the damaged tooth and restore its function until the permanent successor erupts. Successful treatment of pulp tissue reduces the need for unplanned extractions and the undesirable consequences that may follow. Signs that, when observed, indicate the need for pulp therapy. Occlusal caries extending more than 4 mm in depth. A proximal caries where two-thirds of the marginal ridge has been destroyed. Caries involving or very close to the pulp holes on a radiograph. Mobility or tenderness to percussion. Sinus formation and periradicular bone radiolucency on a radiograph. Now to the symptoms that the patient might suffer from that indicates the need for pulp therapy. Mainly, it is pain, but pain can come in different characteristics. Firstly, transient pain on thermal stimuli. That indicates reversible pulpitis, and in that case you can go to pulpotomy if no other contraindication is present. Secondly, spontaneous and lasting pain. It indicates a reversible pulpitis, and in that case, your options would be pulpectomy or extraction. Thirdly, pain on percussion or biting on the tooth. This indicates periapical or intraradicular infection, and also in that case, your options would be pulpectomy or extraction. Pulp treatment in children is indicated in the following cases. Number one, cooperative child and carers. Number two, restorable tooth. Number three, avoidance of the psychological trauma of extraction in an early age. Number four, medical conditions where extraction should be avoided, like haemophilia and bleeding disorders. Number five, absence of the permanent successor tooth. Number six, to maintain an intact arch in the primary dentition. And number seven, space maintenance in the mixed dentition. On the other hand, when can pulp treatment be contraindicated? For example, lack of cooperation from the child or the carers. Also, medically compromised children at risk from a dental bacteremia, like immunocompromised or at risk of developing infective endocarditis, or any condition where focus of infection is potentially dangerous. In such cases, it is better to extract the involved tooth than treating the pulp. Also, unrestorable teeth, where there is insufficient coronal tooth structure to ensure an efficient coronal seal pulse treatment. Materials and instruments needed during the pulp treatment. You'll need sterile round burrs, saline, cotton pellets, 1% sodium hypochlorite for irrigation, mineral trioxide aggregate or MTA, resin modified glass ionomer cement, rubber dam and clamps for isolation, endodontic manual files, electronic apex locator, 
flexible nickel titanium rotary files, paper points, calcium hydroxide iodoform paste and disposable syringe for irrigation. Now to the main point of the tutorial, techniques. It is worth remembering that even a tooth that appears to be completely non-vital may still have vital pulp tissues remaining as some roots might be vital and the other roots are non-vital in the same tooth. So sensitivity test is unreliable. The basic pulp therapy techniques available dependent on the extension of the pulpal inflammation and can be broadly divided into three categories. Number one, pulp capping. This involves two approaches, direct and indirect. The direct pulp cap is not routinely used in primary dentition due to poor outcomes. Number two, pulpotomy. It is the removal of the coronal pulp tissues only. This can be performed only on vital teeth, but the technique can differ in respect of choice of medicament and the number of visits required. Number three, pulpectomy. It is the removal of the entire coronal and radicular pulp tissues. This can be used for non-vital teeth, with or without signs of infection. Complete removal of the pulp of the primary tooth, then obturated with a resorbable material not to interfere with the root resorption and permanent successor eruption. Since direct pulp capping is not used in primary dentition due to poor outcomes, then the first technique we're going to discuss would be the indirect pulp capping. It is indicated for asymptomatic, vital primary molars with no pulp exposure after the removal of all soft caries, and it aims to maintain the health and vitality of the tooth pulp. This technique starts with the removal of all soft caries. Note that leaving carious but firm affected dentine in vitally asymptomatic primary molar has been shown to be reasonably successful. The margins of the cavities should be rendered caries free to ensure an adequate coronal seal. This technique works best in the occlusal cavities and less likely to be successful in a proximal caries due to the early pulpal involvement and difficulty in achieving good coronal seal. Use sitting calcium hydroxide in the deepest portion of the cavities with glass ionomer, composites or stainless steel crowns. If pulpal exposure occurs, pulpotomy or pulpectomy are usually more appropriate restorative techniques. The second technique, pulpotomy. It is the removal of the coronal pulp tissues only. In primary molars, the relatively larger pulps result in earlier pulpal involvement. Therefore, amputation of the coronal pulp, leaving healthy radicular pulp in situ, gives more consistent results than other techniques that attempt to retain the vitality of the whole pulp, like direct pulp capping. Materials needed in this technique most commonly used medicaments are formacresol, historically and widely used for primary teeth pulpotomy because of its ease of use and high success rates that ranges between 70 and 90%. However, recent concerns about the toxicity and potential mutagenicity of formalin containing compounds has led many authorities to advise against its use where suitable alternatives exist. Another medicament is ferric sulfate, the technique recommended by many authorities as an alternative for formacresol. Success rates have been shown to nearly match the formacresol, but are more technique sensitive. Also, calcium hydroxide. It is very time consuming and more technique sensitive, but similar success rates to ferric sulfate in some studies. Mineral trioxide aggregate or MTA. 
recent studies demonstrate similar success rates to formocresol, but is very expensive compared to other medicaments. Bioactive dentine substitutes. Recent studies shows that promising results in primary tooth pulpotomy are shown using bioactive dentine substitutes. Also, devitalizing pastes or boroformaldehydes has fallen out of favor for the same reason as formacresol, which is toxicity and mutagenicity. Now let's discuss the pulpotomy technique in details. Starting with giving local anesthesia and place rubber down for isolation. Complete cavity preparation and excavate caries. Remove the roof of the pulp chamber. Amputate coronal pulp tissue with a large excavator or sterile round bear. Wash the chamber and arrest the bleeding with damp cotton wool. Place a cotton wool dampened with 15.5% ferric sulfate on the exposed pulp for at least one minute, then remove it. Once bleeding arrested, place calcium hydroxide or MTA over the root orifices. Apply dressing of reinforced zinc oxide eugenol cement. Restore the tooth structure, usually done using stainless steel crowns. Note that necrotic pulps known with no bleeding. In that case, proceed with non-vital technique, which is vulpectomy or extraction. Profuse hemorrhage indicates more serious inflammation of the radicular pulp. In that case, also non-vital technique or extraction would be more favorable. Here are the steps again, starting with caries removal, arresting the bleeding until we see the orifices with a clean pulp chamber, and placing a cotton billet, dressing and restoring with stainless steel crown. Moving on to the third technique, pulpectomy. It is the removal of the whole pulp tissue, including both coronal and radicular portions. It is indicated in non-vital teeth or teeth diagnosed with irreversible pulpitis without accompanying any signs of internal or excessive root resorption, intraradicular lesion affecting permanent successor, severe bone loss, mobility or perforation in the focal area. A pulpectomy is often considered difficult in primary molars because of the complexity of ribbon-shaped canals, although instrumentation is often easier than some texts may suggest. The risk of damage, the permanent successor also needs to be considered, but if conditions are favourable, it is the treatment of choice for non-vital pulps. Pulpectomy technique in details. Starting with the local anesthesia and rubber dam for isolation. Remove the caries and the necrotic pulp. Locate the files and irrigate the canals using 0.1% sodium hypochlorite. Cleanse to within 2 to 3 mm of the apex, but avoid extending beyond, not to harm the permanent successor. Fill the canal with resorbable material, not to interfere with the primary molar root resorption and the eruption of the permanent successor. Such a material could be zinc oxide eugenol paste, non-sitting calcium hydroxide or a uniform paste. Placing these materials using spiral fillers or lintulo spirals. Restore the tooth using stainless steel crowns. Arrange clinical and radiographic reviews. Note that any evidence of infection in the tooth, you are recommended to use two-stage treatment, leaving non-setting calcium hydroxide in the canals for one or two weeks prior to fillings. 
Success rate exceeds 80% at three years of age, has been reported. Here is the technique again. Removal of the keras, removal of the necrotic pulp, and placing the files. Irrigating, drying, and filling. And at the end, restoring the tooth with stainless steel crown. Now let's discuss how to treat the pulp of the anterior primary teeth. The usual treatment is extraction, since the A's and B's are exfoliated before the patient is even able to cooperate with more complicated treatments such as pulp therapy. However, the C's are exfoliated later on, and unilateral loss may result in center line shifting. Therefore, pulp treatment is indicated for some patients. The root canal morphology is amenable to pulpectomy, and the canal should be cleaned with files with care not to damage the underlying permanent successor. A resorbable filling material, such as calcium hydroxide or zinc oxide eugenol, should be used to fill the canals, not to interfere with the root resorption and the eruption of the permanent successor later on. Finally, restore the crown using prefabricated zirconia crown for aesthetics. Last but not least, the complications and pitfalls that you may encounter. Failure in accurate diagnosis and case selection can lead to failed treatment outcomes. The presence of undercuts following the unroofing of the pulp chamber in pulpotomy impairs the complete removal of pulp tissue, causing the persistent pulpal bleeding. Placement of a temporary restoration over the MTA requires a second appointment for placement of the final restoration and increases the risk of compromising the coronal seal, so try to wrap it all in one visit. Pulpectomy can be a complex procedure in case of tortuous root canals and resorbing primary tooth roots, and also in young children. Instrument separation in a primary tooth can be an unforeseen complication. The resorption rate of the calcium hydroxide iodoform paste is faster than that of the root of the tooth. Over instrumentation during pulpectomy procedure in primary tooth can damage the underlying permanent tooth. And with that, we have covered all the points. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I'd like to have you here for more videos. And follow us on Instagram at Dented Gender for extra tips and tricks.